And this question says prove. So we're going to do proofs. And now that we've learned new identities, double angle identities, they can appear in proofs as well. So how do we start off a proof? Well, we start off by writing it out. Drawing our line to separate things. And with proofs that have a double angle identity, and this one has two of them. It has a cos 2 theta and a sine 2 theta. Whenever you have the double angle identities in a proof, it usually makes the most sense to change them to one of the formulas so that you can solve this proof. Now, we won't be able to solve this proof by having double angles on one side and not double angles on the other. So what we start off with is I look at the right-hand side and I say, well, for sine 2 theta, that one's really easy to change because I only have one option. Sine 2 theta, the only option is to change it to 2 sine theta cos theta. But with cos 2 theta, I have three options. And just like before, all three will work, but one of them will be faster than the others. So take a look at the three formulas for cos 2 alpha and decide if you want to use the first one, the second one, or the third one. I'm going to put a big set of brackets here. I'm going to put my plus one. That's still going to be there. And we're going to figure out which of the three cos 2 theta ones makes the most sense. And in the meantime, while you're thinking about that, I'm going to take my left-hand side. I'm going to change this to sine and cos. So cotangent is cos theta over sine theta. Any suggestions? Which of the three do you like the best and why? Yes, yeah, so if we use the third one, we can see that our ones are going to cancel out. And that's nice because I don't have a plus one on my left hand side. So it, looking for one where the ones are going to cancel out, that's going to be really nice because those are like terms. And then my expression on the left here becomes 2 cos squared theta over 2 cos theta sine theta. And at this point, you might be able to see, hey, this is all multiplying. I can simplify my twos. And I have another common factor. I have a cos squared on the top and one cos on the bottom. That means one of these coses is going to cancel out with that cos on the bottom. So what am I left with? I'm left with cos theta over sine theta, which is exactly what I had on the left side. So we're all done. So again, when we have double angle identities in a proof, we change them out. So we use our formula to get rid of those double angle identities. Once you've done that, then it's just simplifying like any other proof that you've had before. So let's look at part B. Part B, we have a double angle on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we've got 1 over 2 sine squared. We don't have a double angle. So on the left-hand side, it's cosecant 2 theta. Well, we have no formulas with cosecant 2 theta, but any time you have cosecant, cosecant is the same as 1 over sine. The angle doesn't change. 
So it's the same as 1 over sine 2 theta. Now, if I change cotangent to sine and cos, and I change 1 over sine 2 theta, because I have a formula for that, 2 sine theta cos theta, we're multiplying our fractions. Do we have any factors that are the same? My coses will simplify. And on the bottom, sine times sine is sine squared. And we're done. So the proofs with the double angle identities aren't that much harder than any of the proofs you've done so far. You just have to change that double identity right away, and then it becomes like a proof that you've solved in the past. So 10, 11, and 17.